This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Many times I'm talking about the huge righteous man Moses, the Ish Moshe, this huge giant human being that it's impossible really to understand his greatness. How strong was that person? How much he was willing to sacrifice for us, for, for silly people like us. He was ready to die without knowing you, never spoke with you before. You're a good person, he's going with you, ready to die for you. Think about it today in the political world that we know. You have a leader, he will do whatever it takes to remove all competitions, everyone from different, uh, different sections, he will, he will try to, to erase them and to do everything that he can in his power to make sure that his leadership will go on and for another year, for another, another period of time, another four years, another four, everything he will do for that. Moses, he hears from Yahshua Binun that there are more people that are now speaking in the camp and they're, they're prophesizing, they're talking and they're telling things from Hashem. And Yahshua is warning him, be careful, Moses, people are growing, people are becoming holy and righteous, and people are talking, people become prophets, you know, it, it can risk your kingship, your, your, your leadership. Moses tells him, I wish all of Am Israel will become prophets, I want all of them to, to know Hashem, to see Hashem. He, he couldn't care less about himself. All of the time seeing himself as a slave of Am Yisrael, as a servant of Am Yisrael, running to protect the Jews, running to, to help them, to provide. He was the son who was, was adopted by the princess, the daughter of Pharaoh. He was able to live all of his life in front of the Nile, the Red Sea, all the kingship, all the wealth, all the, the luxuries of, of a prince, of a child of a king. He was exempt from all works. This person doesn't know how to rest. Waking up in the morning, running to help the Jewish slaves that are working and suffering in their camps of work and running and carrying with them the bags and the stones and the sand and being, suffering with them. See the, the officers beating them and attacking them and he's pushing himself between the, the the, the officers and, and, and his people and protecting them and defending them and in the end even found himself killing one of the of, of, of those of those officers just to just to save a life of, of a person that in the end went and spoke bad about him and told about him to the government over there to the to the officers and they wanted to arrest him and to execute him and he had to run to the desert and for what? For saving our lives now. When Moses is finding himself after taking Am Israel out and suffering for them and risking his life for them and taking them out to the desert and they're all alive and everything is great and amazing and he goes up to Mount Sinai and arguing with Hashem and the Midrash is saying that Moshe was fighting with Hashem, with the Creator, and was overpowering, he, he was stronger than Hashem, took the holy tablet. It worked. We need to oh, yes. Now it works. Oh, it's okay, whatever Hashem wants, don't worry. Also in Mount Sinai there were problems of Wi-Fi, trust me. There were clouds, there were thunders, darkness. So, when, uh, when Moses is taking the holy tablets and he's walking down the, the mountain 
about to give them, to hand them to, to his people, and he sees them all worshipping idols with the, with the golden... They're doing it, and Moshe Rabbeinu, think about what it he's doing now. He's taking the holy tablets, and instead of giving them to Am Israel, he's not able to give them to Am Israel. And if he will give them back to Hashem, it's a disgrace that cannot be described. How can you, like, you, you just now forced Hashem to give you the Bible, to give you the tablets, and now you bring them back? It's a disgrace. What Moshe is doing, okay. he's breaking the holy tablets. Now, how can, how can that be done? Who can do something like that? Who is able to take the holy tablets, handmade of Hashem, been written just now by the finger, with the, through the finger of Hashem? Hashem carved the holy letters into the holy tablets that have been made by Him before of creation. And Moses is taking the most precious thing in the world and just dropping it to the ground, breaking it to pieces. What are you doing? He's sacrificing himself for us. If he will give it to us, we will all gonna die. The punishment of us not being worthy, and even though receiving it will make such horrible decrees that Am Israel wouldn't survive those horrible judgments. What can we do, Allah? <laughs> so what can we do? What should I say? You thought that there is no Yetzirah? You think there is no Yetzirah in this world? Yetzirah hurt thousands of people, that's it. He's losing his mind. He doesn't let us broadcast live on Facebook. He's too scared. I understand? You can understand it? Everything is good. Now I'm telling you, this is one thing, and it's a great thing. We're reminding ourselves of the most powerful person, Moshe Rabbeinu, that he was able to go and to do all of those wonders and to fight for us and was ready to sacrifice himself. An honorable figure will, will stand in front of your eyes, probably from some children book that you saw in your eyes once, once upon a time. But the truth is that when Mashiach will come in this generation, he will be one of us. Mashiach will not gonna come like that it's written on a white donkey, it, maybe a, in, on a white Chevy he will, he will drive. <laughs> Mashiach will come, Mashiach will come between us, and Mashiach will be one of us, and Mashiach will be a person that would to a dark beginning of, of exile of thousands of years ago. And Moses, this Mashiach of this generation, he will know how to go and how to heal those wounded people how to heal us, how to help us with our emotional problems, how to talk to us, how to speak to us in the same height of our eyes, to speak with us, eyes to eyes, face to face. He will have that power to speak to us. So we need to understand that we need to be His friends, we need to be His soldiers. We need to prepare ourselves for the redemption. Or he will wake you up from bed. Oh yes, it's 11.30. Yes, I know. No, I need another hour. No, come with me. He will wake you up. You're going to beg to sleep for another hour. He won't let you. He will wake you up. He will help you to stand up back from out of your bed. And he will help you. And he will give you power. And he will give you advice. And he will support you. And he will give you the, the reason to live. Another reason to smile. To cross another day in the difficult, and you don't know what that to do with your bad habits and with your weaknesses and with your computer and with your phone and with your issues and with your weaknesses and depression and sadness and and traumas from childhood and you need help for your problems. For that, Mashiach will come. Mashiach will come to help you and to answer your most hardest questions and to give and provide an advice for the hardest issues of your life. So for that you need to believe that there is hope for your problems. If we're waiting for some biblical redemption, I'm telling you it's not going to come because we're not in that time anymore. 
the Mashiach that will come will come to our lives. He will come to heal us, our wounds. It will be a person that will be able to speak to us in our own language. Someone that will love us. Someone that will show us the love of the Creator. You know which love? The unconditional love of the Creator. What does it mean, an unconditional love? That you are accepted. No matter who you are, you are welcomed and accepted in the eyes of Hashem. You're going to be loved and accepted and hugged and honored and, and supported and welcomed. And with a huge smile of grace and kindness, you will be accepted. With all your defaults, with all your sins, with all your crimes, with all your weaknesses, all your sadnesses and foreign thoughts about yourself, all your criticism and craziness, with all your scars, with all your bleeding wounds till the bones, with all your history, you will be accepted. You will be welcome. And now you need to believe it about it. It's our job to understand that thing. For me, it's not a challenge. And I'll tell you why. Because I don't have a doubt about it. And why? Not because I'm special. Because I know about myself that I, being woke up by the Creator, when I was in such a filthy place in my life, I was so far. I've been drifted to such far places and the Creator was not part of my life at all. If you would tell me that one day I will be religious, 20 years ago I would laugh. I would think that you're on drugs or something. I wouldn't care about nonsense. You're crazy, okay. Another crazy radical religious Haredi. Okay, so you can say whatever. I was driving my Jeep, I was riding my bike, I was doing my drugs, I was going out, I was celebrating, I was doing whatever. I was busy thinking, planning my next tattoo while I was clubbing. I was not with you at all. I wasn't here. I was there. I was somewhere else. I couldn't care less. But Hashem Barach touched my heart, not in a miracle and a wonder, just He really touched the points that were important to me. He knew me and He touched me. And He woke me up to realize that He exists, that there is a Creator, and that I am not the most important thing in the world that needs to take care of His issues and his needs and always to survive and no matter what and he showed me that there are things that are more important than my desires and my lusts or my fears and he woke me up and he woke me up and today you're right if you can ask me today but look at you how many great things you're doing every day you pray and you eat only kosher and you keep shabbat for more than 20 years and you're doing one hour it but the dude for more than 10 years every day one hour and you made thousands of hours in but dude yes and you're teaching and you learn torah thousands of hours of torah yes and you're mezakar you go and you speak hashem loves you great you're right today you're right but 20 years ago, when Hashem Barach opened my eyes, He still did it because He loved me. And I was empty-handed. I was walking barefoot. I was naked. And He still loved me. When He woke me up, I wasn't, lo I wasn't look like that, like I look today. I was walking with my jeans, with my sandals. I was walking with my spikes, with my... My, my leather spikes belt. I was crazy. I was out there. I was out. I was walking with my black tank top and, and, and in the streets with bright blue ugly sunglasses. I was, I was there. And Hashem Barach touched my heart. And Hashem Barach called me. And He told me, my son, I'm here. And like that He called you. One, he's calling him when he's in the army. One, he's calling him when he's in school. One, because of difficulties in Shlom Bayit. One, because of challenges. One, because his father passed away. One, everyone got one in a car accident. One in the war. Everyone. One in the hospital. Everyone, Hashem touched his heart 
in the point that will wake up his heart. And when? When Hashem usually touches our hearts, when we are in the lowest place, not when we are in the highest place. When Hashem called Am Israel, my children, Banai, when He called us His children, when we were in the temple, in the great days, under the kingship of King Solomon, in the days of wealth and wonders, no. In the days of poverty, when we were slaves, when we were naked, when we were poor, then He saw us, and He saw the good point when we were humble, when we were low, and today we are lower than in Egypt 3,000 years ago. We are much lower than those days. We today are in the lowest place of them all. We are now under 50 gates of impurity of Tum'ah. 50 gates of insanity. <laughs> 50 gates of craziness. 50 gates of despair and sadness and depression and confusions and lust and desires. Every gate is one bad attribute. Every gate is another defect in our spirit. We have more than 50. Easily. He's sad and depressed and vulnerable and, and traumatized and, and hurt and upset and cruel and vicious and angry and on and on and on and on with no end to the gates of Tum'ah. No end! Jealousy and, and, and criticism on, on air. Nothing can pass. Nothing is good. Nothing is okay. Everything is wrong and twisted and bent and we're arguing and competing and fighting and, and, and with no reason and hating and despiting and and, and, and being provocative and arrogant and selfish and self-centered and like 5,000 gates of Tuma. <laughs> we are under 5,000 gates of Tuma. And still Hashem Yidvarach is touching our hearts. Still Hashem Yidvarach is opening our eyes. Still Hashem Yidvarach is telling each and every one of us, my child, I love you. Because he's showing it to us, like I told you, that for me, it's not even a challenge, it's not even a test to believe in the greatest, greatness of Hashem. Why? Because he's shown it to me, that he loved me when I was naked, when I was poor, when I was broken. Then he chose to wake me up. Then he chose to open my eyes. So every person that looks at himself... Look into reality. How far you are from holiness. How far we are from purity. How far we are from wisdom, from completion of faith. No connection almost to faith. Almost no connection to purity. Almost no connection to wisdom. To all qualities of, of righteous men. Like, with all due respect to the elder ones, I'm sorry. We're so far, so far. Always afraid, always jealous, always angry, always sad, always depressed, always have complaints. Always, always scared, no confidence in the Creator, no faith, no trust in Him, no hope, full of despair, full of, of depressions and craziness and, 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 and lusts and desires that even when you're 18, this generation... 90 years old, full with lusts and desires, like a 20 years old criminal. Don't understand what's going on. Full of defaults. And still the Creator comes down to every single one of us and hugging us and petting us and accepting us. And that will be the job of Mashiach. And if we want to join Mashiach, that's supposed to be our job as well. To go and to show that unconditional love, first of all to ourselves, to accept yourself. That's the main challenge, that's the main work. You cannot accept him or her until you will learn how to accept yourself. You cannot forgive him or her until you will learn how to forgive yourself. You must learn how to forgive yourself. You know how you're going to do that? 
If you will look, make an honest investigation deep to the roots of your own soul and be brave, be strong, go all the way, check the truth about your sins, about your worst crimes of them all. The worst failures of your life, now put them under the lights. Let's check them. Let's now dissect them one detail after the next. Put one horrible sin. I'm asking you, what brought you to sin like that? Horrible sin. You lied. You cheated. You betrayed. You did something horrific. Something that you can ever, never forgive yourself on. Great. Wonderful. Now, let's put it on the table. Why? I'm asking you why. Why were you doing that if not because you were terrified, because you were lost, because you were confused, because you didn't know better, because you were so, so, so sad and depressed and felt so alone and you made a horrible mistake under such amounts of pressure that's when you sinned. En adam chote, ela im ken nichnas bo ruach shtut. A person cannot sin, cannot sin. He will never gonna sin unless some bad spirit took over him. Some bad spirit took over your mind in that hour and you made something horrible. You're right. I'm not saying you haven't. But I'm talking to you about your heart, about who that you really are. Even though that you messed up, even though that you failed, and even failed big time in a way that you don't want ever to be mentioned again. I can understand that. But to hate yourself for that is a mistake is a mistake because you don't go all the way with your inner investigation to find the roots of your character, of who that you really are, and why really you failed. Go back to your childhood. That's where really your sin started. Because if you did something today, it's because that something is bugging and sitting on your back for years already. And now you've been cracked. Now you failed. You fail today because of years of pressure, years of fears, of humiliations, of sorrow and pain that you carry within, things that you don't know how to deal with, embarrassments and humiliations that you don't know how to swallow, that you don't have a clue how to deal with such horrible life experience that you have. That's the reason that you sinned. Because of the darkness and because of the exile of thousands of years of our people. You are a result of thousands of years of sorrow and pain and poverty and blood and tears and wars and fears with no end, anxieties with no end. Hours of sorrow and pain, years of despair. And you're finding yourself today like an orphan in front of your parents, like a poor person with millions of dollars in your wallet, don't know how to handle your heart, don't know how to handle your emotions, don't know how to have one simple conversation, don't know how to shake a hand of a rabbi, doesn't know how to say a good word to your wife, don't know how to raise your children, doesn't know how to open a book, cannot communicate, cannot make one simple phone conversation, conversation to a client that wants to buy your merchandise, don't know how to find your legs and your hands, completely lost. How can you judge yourself for being so weak after thousands of years of destruction? To judge and criticize yourself is the act of the evil inclination of the devil, of the snake, of the Yetzirah to break your spirit. Don't play along with him. Don't play that game. 
Don't let no one break your spirit, even if you failed in the worst failures of them all. Even if you are the worst one in this world, in this lifetime, in this generation, in this... And they will fight with you as well if you're hurting other people. They will never gonna let you destroy other souls because you're so poor. You are poor, be poor in your own place. Don't make other people poor. Moses will never gonna let you step on the heads of other people. He will never gonna let you go and stab your friends from the back. He will never gonna allow one person to cheat on his wife and that it will be okay. It's not okay. It's not allowed to lie. It's not allowed to steal. It's not allowed to betray. It's not allowed to sin. We're stopping everyone that tries to do bad, but we're judging the souls favorably. We understand that people are poor. Now those ones that will work on themselves to improve themselves, to fix themselves, those ones that will show that they want to take responsibility on their actions, that they want to improve, that they want to be better people. Those are the ones that will be connected to the eternal tree of life and will live forever. And the only thing that matters is your will, is your holy desire to cut yourself from all the bad and your holy desire to connect yourself to all kinds of good. All kinds of good means also to appreciate people that put water in their backyards for cats and squirrels to have water to drink with no connection to Torah and Mitzvot just because that their heart is alive. That they're not throwing garbage in the street not because of Torah commanded that because they want to live life of, 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 of joy, that the streets will be clean, life of honor, that they can appreciate each other, that they can support and love each other. You will never gonna see Moses throwing the end of his, the filter of his cigarette in the street when he finishes cigarette. You will never gonna see him smoking in front of other people, even if he will have that bad habit of smoking. You will never gonna see him embarrassing someone in public. You will never gonna see him talking bad words about someone else. You will never gonna see Moses talking Lashonara on someone else. You will never gonna see Moses rebuking someone in public, mentioning his name and saying bad things about him in front of people. You will never gonna see him with bad midot. Not because he doesn't have Yetzirah, just because that he's working on himself to fix himself and to be a good person. Moses, yes. Aish Moshe. He worked on himself to become that righteous man that he became. To Avraham Avinu, it took 90 years to get into the gates of purity of holiness. Righteous people, the verse is saying, Tzadik katamar ifrach. A righteous man, he is growing, blooming like the, the palm tree. That it takes him 70 years to reach to his maximum height. A righteous man is a man, is a person that works every day. That every day he tries to be better. That every day he tries to be nicer. That every day he tries to be kinder. He tries to be more polite and to accept others. And to smile more and to accept more. And to listen more and to think more. And to observe more and to pray more. That's a righteous man. A righteous man is not a pillar of fire that walks between the clouds. No. This is something else. I don't know. Dragon maybe. <laughs> A righteous man is a man with a heart. A righteous woman is a woman with a heart. He's someone that cares about his friends. He cares about his people. He wants to know that everyone are healthy and that they're warm in their houses and that they have blankets to sleep to cover themselves in the winter. And he cares about your backyard exactly like that he cares about his own and your property like he cares about his. And He loves you in unconditional love. Because you're a soul. 
And not even a human being. He cared the same about animals and plants. He was never going to cut a plant or going to kick a, 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 a can in the street. He won't. He's respectable. He will take that can and put it in the garbage with honor and with respect. You will never going to see him disgrace the creation. Moses refused to hit the ground. He refused to hit the water. He refused. Because they did a favor to him. Favor? They were there. They were there. You think the water made a favor? Which favor? They were water. But he remembers the benefit that came out from the water to him as a child. And he remembers the benefit, the good that came out of the ground for him as a child, as a man. And he remembers and he's got gratitude and appreciation. And he goes with that to say thank you to the trees and to the weather and to the water and to people and to friends. Rabbi Yochanan was saying Shalom Aleichem to every person in the market. There was no one person ever that was able to tell him Shalom Aleichem before he told him Shalom. Even a non-Jew in the market. To everyone. Think about yourself walking here in the streets. Every person that walks, Shalom Aleichem, Shalom Aleichem, Shalom Aleichem, Shalom Aleichem. Be that one. Why not to smile and to shine? Be light to the nations. Spread the light of your inner faith to the world. That everyone will know Hashem. That everyone will know your greatness, the greatness of that chosen people that have been chosen to reveal the unconditional love of the Creator to His creations, to all creations, to the animals, to the birds, to the flies, to the squirrels, to all kinds of animals, to kittens. He loves kittens. Hashem loves kittens. He loves everyone. He loves them. They're creation. He's creations. He created them. So cute and adorable. <laughs> he loves them. You love them? You have one? I do know Hashem. Hashem, He loves everyone. Hashem Barach, He made everyone with a sweet smile. Hashem Barach made everyone with grace, with beauty. Every single particle of the creation got His job in the creation, got His mission, got His purpose. And we, as children of the Creator, as children of the Almighty, we must understand that we must shine His light in the world. And to wait for Mashiach to come, it's one thing, but to be worthy to be part of his army, to be part of his class, to be called one of his followers, one of his students, it's to become like him. It's that when someone is talking to you, he will see on your face that you are a student of Mashiach, that you have the wisdom of the Almighty. The wisdom of the Creator is the wisdom that will give hope, will plant hope in the hearts of the ones that will hear it. The wisdom of the Creator will never going to be a wisdom that will plant fear in the, in the ears of the ones that heard it. Never. If you went now to a lecture, and in that lecture you heard the Rabbi speaks, and while that rabbi was talking, you've been filled with fear, with stress. Don't know what to do with yourself. Losing your mind. And what's going to be? And it's a halakha shiu. It's a great shiu. It's a great class. It's a musar class. It's a what? It's supposed to be a great class. At least that's what I hope that it will be. And you find yourself under pressure and stress and losing your mind. And then you go home with the wisdom and you rebuke your wife and fight with your children. And fire comes out of that Torah and eating your own house and destroying your self-esteem and your happiness. That's how I call it. This is not the wisdom of Hashem. This is the wisdom of the devil. That's how I call it. The wisdom of the snake. That is destroying your souls. 
and planting fear and anxieties in the heart of those ones that are seeking the truth. And he's destroying the spirits of those ones that are asking for hope and happiness and comfort finally. And he destroys them with the heels of his shoes like those dark horses of smoke that are blocking the light from the world. So if you go to a class like that, so at least make it the last time. <laughs> don't make it a habit to suffer. You don't need to suffer. You need to learn from righteous people that are planting hope in your heart, that are strengthening your spirit and supplying good advice that will teach you how to honor your beloved ones and how to care about them and how to deal with your weaknesses and how to forgive yourself and your friends and your children, your husband or your wife, your parents, how really to respect them and how not to be terrified by them and by the rules. This is the job of the government to make you terrified by the rules. It's not the job of the righteous ones. The real righteous ones are the ones that makes other people righteous. That they will give you strength and hope. That they will cheer up your spirit to be happy and glad and grateful. To recognize the greatness and the kindness of the Creator in your life. To plant hope and joy. No matter who you are, they will revive you and give you happiness. They will give you a lifeline. They will give you reasons to live, to work a little bit harder tomorrow, and to apologize and to do tshuva, and to fix another thing, and to work on the next, and to learn a little bit more, first of all about yourself, second about the Torah, about other, how to help other people. This is the job of Mashiach. This is the job of the real righteous ones. So if you see that there are things that are breaking your spirit, listen, they are being used by the dark side to break your spirit. He's using every vessel, every tool to destroy the holy souls of Israel. He's breaking every good and holy thing that he can. If someone is quoting verses, it doesn't necessarily mean that he is Mashiach or a messenger of the Bible or the Holy Truth. He can be the worst liar that is using the most gentle and most highest things to stab you and to destroy your self-esteem and to kill you. And he might not even be aware to the destruction that he's planting in the souls of our people. But you, at least, protect yourself. If he knows or if he doesn't know, if you see that he breaks your spirit, don't listen to him. Don't listen to that. It's garbage. It's garbage. You know that if a person that doesn't believe in Hashem, that doesn't believe in the truth of the Torah, if he writes a Sefer Torah, you can take that Sefer Torah and throw it to the garbage. It's halakha. It's not a Sefer Torah at all. The same number of letters written in the same shape exactly, under the same rules, but the person that wrote it does not have faith in the Creator. He's an Epicorus. He doesn't believe that Hashem exists. He thinks about himself, and he wrote that book you can take that book and put it in the fire, in the garbage, in the sewer. It's not holy. In, there is no side of holiness to that sefer, to that book. It's not a sefer Torah. Same letters, exactly. No difference at all in the garbage. Why? Because the holiness of that book is the intention of the heart of the author, of the writer. Now, if there is a teacher, a rabbi, that is going and spreading poison, even if he is being called a rabbi, even if he is a 
famous rabbi, even if he's not aware to the results of his actions and how horrible are his actions, there is no purity and holiness in his speeches to hear and to follow. Because he does not believe in Hashem. And he will claim that he is, that he does. But if he is not revealing the mercy and the unconditional love of the Creator, it means that he doesn't have a clue who the Creator is. If he is describing the Creator as the devil, so he doesn't know what he's talking about. If for you to hear from him is bad news, something is wrong with him. How do we if know he's him? not what? How do we know him? How do you know him? If after the class or during the class you hear you want to die, <laughs> so that's the answer. If you feel bad with yourself after the class, there is something. Let's say that the person now rebuked you. And he gave you an advice that after that you've been rebuked, that rebuke gives good smell to your spirit. It means that you feel that even though that you've been rebuked, that rebuke came out of someone that loves you. So then that rebuke got the power of helping you to do tshuva, to come back to Hashem. So that rebuke doesn't give you the will to die, doesn't kill you. It plants, even though that it was painful, it still plants hope in your heart. Because it gives you the power to work on yourself, to apologize, to come back to get to, to who that you want to be, and really to, to improve. So you're happy even from that rebuke. But if the person that is rebuking you leave inside of you only poison and in the end of his rebuke you just feel like I'm horrible I want to die I'm not doing anything good I messed up I don't have no hope and my beloved one is not listening to me he doesn't want to do it she is so selfish he is so selfish he is so ignorant he is so this and that and like everything is getting rotten and dark and bitter. So you had a meeting with the devil. <laughs> and who got the who has the responsibility to save his own life? You. First of all. It's an obligation to choose life. It's an obligation on you to choose life. What is life? What that is good, what it gives you hope and, and, and strengthen your will to come closer to the Creator. Now you hear a lecture that gives you hope, that gives you strength, that's life. That's life. It gives you hope and strength to continue to work on yourself, to improve. Not telling you go to the beach, don't tell you go violate Shabbat, don't tell you go sin and be happy. No, we're talking about rabbis or kosher people. Talking about people that are guiding you to find good things in life, purpose, meaning in your life. If you hear someone that gives you good strength, good wave of, 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 of spirit, that gives you power, flow with that. That's the right direction. When you keep the commandments of Hashem in the straight way, they bring happiness to your heart. And sadness and depression, those are aspects of impurity. So if someone influenced that poison on you, something impure is in his vibe, is in his wave. So you just don't follow his nonsense, you connect yourself to the moon project, and you're on the way. <laughs> so, I'm a very broken person. I'm telling you the truth. I'm a very broken person. I'm not a happy clown that dance on cars and 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 the best level Hasid that, that dance in the streets. I'm not. I'm a very broken person. I care about every butterfly that flies in the woods. I don't know what to do with myself. I'm losing my mind every hour. So <laughs> that's me. I don't know how to deal with my own life. But we're trying. We're doing the best that we can. I'm a sensitive person. I can, I can cry for hours. I don't know what to do with myself. My wife looks at me like she's got another baby. 40 years old baby. 
time. It's reality. But we're working, working hard, working hard to, to, to fix ourselves, working hard to be better people, to be nicer to other people, to care, to listen all the way, to learn how to listen. I once gave a class, a very important class, I was mentioning this concept of, of wanting to want. Sometimes you want something, and it's great, something good, you want to keep Shabbat, you want to learn, great, amazing. Sometimes you don't want to, and you don't know what to do with it. Like, you, you couldn't care less about it, and like, something is wrong. I don't want not to care about it, I want to care. So you need to want to want. And sometimes you don't even want to want. Sometimes you don't want to want. You don't want, you just want to be, you know, leave me alone. You just want to go. So you need to want, to want, to want. And this is the best advice in the world. Why? Because you can always want to want, to want, to want, to want, to want, to want. In the end, you can want it. But they just say, okay, you know what? I want that. Because, it, you, yes, you've been drifted. You're very far. You're now lying on the beach in Miami. You're like, wow, you're so stoned and, and relaxed. And, ah, and like people are talking to you about kashrut and like, what? Kashrut? What are you talking about? Nets. The davening nets. What did I say? What? Nets? What's that? What? What? You don't know what, what's going on at all. Like, stoners, you know. In that point, still, you have an inner spark inside of you that desire good things to happen for you in your life. Even if you're so far away, still good you want to have. You wish to have something good. So from that place, you should start your journey. You can want to want to want to come closer to the good, to the truth. You can want to want to work on yourself. You can start somewhere. We need to find the advice that will give us power to hold on, to survive, sometimes even not to kill ourselves, literally. There are people that the depression and the sadness and, and sorrow in their lives today is, 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 is horrible, it's too much to survive. People want to die. And we need to give them advice. The advice for them is not to wake up to daven nets. It's not the advice for them. Wake up early dawn, go to the mikveh and run to shul with your tefillin. It's not an advice. It's not practical. He's not going to do it. Never. Like, no. Go to the beach. So, for <laughs> you, no, for them. For some time, some time, sometimes for the person to be alone in the beach and to speak with Hashem and to have one moment of quiet can be a life-changing experience. It can save his life, and you don't know that. Only after the fact you see that that vacation saved your life. And you never, you can never plan that. When you want that vacation to, to save your life, it will never work. But after the fact, you can look and you see that, that, that from heaven, Hashem Barach did it for you in a way that He saved your life through that experience. So. We need always to understand, first of all, ourselves, how our spirit works, and the spirits of our beloved ones and our surroundings. To understand them and always to give them advice and, and, and wisdom that will fit for their place, that will heal them. Not to aim too high, not to speak on concepts of Kabbalah in the sky. Go down to earth, be realistic. Speak to him about things that is important and needed for him. To eat healthy, it's a mitzvah. It's also a connection to Hashem. To go to sleep earlier, to, 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 to erase the, the Instagram app, is, is, also, is also a good advice that will connect him to Hashem. Every good advice that will give him a connection to his, to his own soul, is a, a lifeline and a life-saving advice. And we must believe in ourselves that we, when we're working out of our goodwill, 
we are servants of Hashem. Even if we don't know all the verses, even if we don't know how to quote the Mefarshim, even if we're just simple people that are talking with our logic, if you bring the intention of your heart to your conversation, if you bring the light of good that lives inside of you to your daily meetings with people, you will be a messenger of the light and you will save many, many people that will, will grow as a result of their meeting with you. So, us as people that have that spark, we need to see how to join the real Mashiach, King David and Moses, our real, real leaders, the leaders of our nation, and to spread the light of hope in the hearts of our surroundings, to cheer everyone up, to support everyone, to give strength and hope in the hearts of everyone, to accept them, and for that we need to learn how to accept ourselves. You hear me? You? Yeah. Very good. <laughs> everyone. If I'm able to forgive myself, so trust me, you can forgive yourselves as well. So, go ahead. May I ask that. you a question? Yes, please. Um, would you, can you share with us what happened that uh, your heart opens to Hashem? Yes, so I welcome. had, yes, first I was 20 years old and, um, and it started, first of all, I, I must say that the, the beginning is not as exciting as today. Like the journey is just getting more interesting and more interesting with the time. So in the beginning I was not thinking even about supervision of Hashem and stuff like that. And for sure that I didn't felt obligation to the home, it's what I was very far from all of that. And because that I changed place in life and I joined the army in Israel, mm -hmm. And then my, all, all of my company, all of the people, my surroundings were totally different people. Mm -hmm. it, it gives me some kind of freedom to think. Mm -hmm. And I, I allowed myself to, to think and to try to be my, my true self in that new environment. And it helped me a lot. And I had some nice conversations with people over there that offered to me to believe. And those conversations made a mark like it, like it touched my mind, aroused my thoughts to like to check it, and while I was thinking about the potential creator, about might be a God, I suddenly saw that there are many situations in my life that seems to be supervised by a merciful hand, hidden hand that is connecting and tying situations. And I saw that private individual supervision on my life in a very clear way. And one thing led to the next, many experiences, meeting with certain people, conversations, rabbis here and there. And, um, and that was the beginning of my journey. And then I decided to, write the Bible, to read the Bible first time in my life when I was 20. And it was an amazing experience for me. And, but today I must tell you that the person that I learned the most from is my wife. And I learned how it took me a long time, unfortunately. Um, but, but when you learn to listen, the wisdom that you can receive from, from your beloved ones, from your surroundings, is, is priceless. What did I hear from, from her is... Uh, something that I cannot describe in words. Wisdom because of what? Because of true love. Yeah, but yes, that's for sure. True love here is for sure. We were like we're... That's it's, uh, it's the that's strongest so glue ever. And, um, and, but, but it's something that, um, that you build. It's something that uh, when you invest and when you care, and it's not easy. For men, it's not easy. Men are so dumb. It's crazy. <laughs> like, we're so lost. It's a disgrace. But we're working. I'm working. And uh, I'm praying for my friends to work as well. To understand the greatness of... Uh, of, of true love, of real relationship, with honor, with respect. It's something that 
Hashem is saying to us, Lo Matzah Kadosh Baruch Hu Kli Machzik Bracha Ela Shalom. The Creator couldn't find a better vessel to contain the bounty of blessing and blessing, except of peace. Now, peace is not what he will say. Peace is this. This one will say peace. Peace is that she will say that you have peace, not you will say that you have peace. That she will be happy when you came home. <laughs> that she is willing to have you. Not that you are willing her to be quiet. This is not real peace. Peace is love, peace is harmony, it's real respect and affection and, and, and sensitivity to the needs of, of, of the other. Those are very, very high things. And uh, so, so, like, if back then I was, I really, I developed very fast, I was speeding up. When I started my Truva, I was already flying, really. And and it was it was it was pennies compared to what that I'm achieving today. And it's a result of honesty, of, of being ready to sacrifice and to listen and to learn and not to argue all the time and to fight and refuse to listen. And also if you love someone that got that nature of arguing and fighting and refusing to him, there is only one thing to do with him, it's to love him with no end. To love him with no end, and one day, one day that love will penetrate like wa water. They're quiet, but they're going deep. Mm -hmm. So your love and your hope and your prayers are water, and they're going deep. Keep on watering, keep on loving, don't give up. May Hashem in Barach bless you all, that all your prayers and requests will be answered immediately, that you will see wonders in your life, that you won't lack a thing, that you will see happiness in the eyes of all of your beloved ones, and that you will finally gonna appreciate yourselves, and gonna find your true selves, and gonna love yourselves. But after the Racha Kamocha, you cannot love your friend until you love yourself. You need to love your friend like you love yourself. If you hate yourself, you don't have how to love him. You must love yourself. For that you must know your true self. And not to be upset on your lackings. Those are your lackings. It's true. Lackings. It's not you. You are a divine soul. You're a holy soul that came down from heaven. Neshama Elokit you have. You have a godly soul that came down and been dressed in an impure body. So the impure body, yes, is defected with the contamination of the snake. But you, you're a holy soul. So find yourself. Speak to yourself. Ask yourself, who am I? What's the purpose of my life? Why am I here? What am I doing? We have more than 1,500 videos of at least one hour lectures of this person. You can uh, watch him online, emuna.com, that's our website, Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, Emuna. all other junky outlets of the social media. More than welcome to follow us if you're drowning over there, so we'll be your lifeline. Thank you. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.